Hello, I'm Susan Wagner from Country Samplers Farm Hostile Magazine. And in our current issue, we have a homeowner that had some wonderful farmhouse style feed sack pillows. And I thought, man, those look so great. It'd be wonderful to be able to easily recreate them. And so today in our video, we're gonna show you how to do a very simple cover for a bolster pillow like this, that you could either do just like we did here, or you could adjust to be whatever you'd like for your style. So we're gonna make the pillow using this hack, using the, the batting. And I bought this batting at the sewing store. It's just quilt batting. This one happens to be a high loft. Um, it basically comes already rolled up in the, in the package, but if it's not rolled up, you can see that it's just sheets of it. And so if you have this laying around or if you can find it inexpensively and you wanna go this route, this is a great alternative if you can't find an actual bolster pillow. Now what we're gonna to have to do is cut the fabric. And so what you're gonna be looking for, for this particular one, would be we want the fabric to be able to go all the way around the bolster pillow and have some extra for overlap. So we wanna have that. And you also wanna have enough on the sides because what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather the sides with some twine. And so you wanna make sure that you have enough on the side. It's always better to have extra. You can cut off what you need than if you were too short to begin with. So with your fabric cut to size, you're now going to plan out your stencil and the stripes and how you're gonna paint them. So I have, again, here my um, faux bolster that I'm gonna work on. And with it wrapped around, I'm probably going to be looking at the stripe to be right about you know, off center, a little off here to the side. So as you can see with this pillow, you know these grain sacks usually have two thinner stripes on the outside and a thicker stripe on the inside. So that's what we're gonna do with this pillow. So once you have your design thought out and uh, about what you're looking for, you're gonna to wanna to mark it off. So what I had done is we have eight inches on each of the side and the first stripe was gonna be two inches in, which would be 10 inches. So then what we'll do is we'll just mark 10 inches in on your fabric here. And now I'm gonna turn this just to make it easier for me to work and for you guys to see. And you'll notice I put a piece of um, brown paper down below. You want to make sure you protect your surface when you're going to be stenciling because depending again on your fabric, but just for good safety reason anyway, uh, the paint will probably go through a little bit on the fabric. So you want to make sure that you have something down, a piece of cardboard, um, some craft paper like we did here, whatever will work best for you. So with some painter's tape, I'm going to mark off my line and what I'm going to do is mark it just before the marks because that way I'm painting over the marks and then you don't have to see them. And you want to extend a little bit beyond because that's going to hold your fabric in place and just make it a lot easier for you when you stencil. paint the stripes, I chose this uh, somewhat of a steel blue because I think that looks nice on the, these kind of feed sacks. That's typical of what you see. And it's an acrylic paint. They come in all kinds of colors, so you can choose whatever color you prefer. Uh, and we're going to want two parts of the paint to one part of this textile or fabric medium. Okay, so now we're ready to stencil. So you want to load up your brush, and again, these pouncer brushes that are great, these pouncer, pouncer ones, they're little foam on the tip, they're great for stenciling. Um, load up the brush 
take dab a little off to get an idea of how much paint there is to work with. And then you're just going to use dabbing motions all across the spots here that we have masked off. You want to make sure that you dab in there pretty well because you want the paint to get down into the fabrics. When you're stenciling, a tip for you, you want to go up and down like this because that'll make sure that you don't have paint bleeding underneath the masked off areas or when we get to the stencil part, you don't have paint going under the stencil either. So now we're going to let this dry. Uh, to be, for really to be safe, you want to let it dry 24 hours before we move to the next step, but you just want to make sure that it's, it's thoroughly dry before going on to the next part of the, of the painting. Okay, now we're going to pull off the tape and you'll see the stripes. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of tape in the center here um, to make sure that the, you know to put this this wider stripe. And again, this is why you want to make sure this is totally dry because we're going to have to put some tape over these stripes. So here we go with the fabric all painted and I pulled off the painter's tape and you could see the stripes. They look great. And you could always end here. The stripes are beautiful. They would look nice. But I'm going to add just a little bit more to it. So I got some stencils here with the number six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap it a little bit into the stripe and I'm going to paint the number six with a bit darker paint. And then I'm going to put a tiny little TH in here. So it's a little bit more reminiscent of the feed sacks, you know, when they would have measurements on them or numbers. Um, so it'll just add a little bit more to it. So here's our fabric piece with the numbers all stenciled on there and you can see how nice it looks with that darker color on there. So now the next step is to go ahead and get the fabric wrapped around our bolster. Okay, so next what we're going to do is just gather the edges together here and we'll make our pillow. So here we go. Here's our finished bolster farmhouse style feed sack pillow. It came out great and really did not take much time at all. It was pretty easy to do. And the best part is you can always take it apart if you wanted to try something different. So we hope you really enjoyed learning how to make a pillow like this and that you try to do it yourself. If you do, we'd love to have you share your photos on our Facebook page, our Instagram, or you could just tag Country Sampler Farmhouse Style. And be sure to pick up the current issue to see lots of great other ideas and some wonderful home decorating from homeowners across the country just like you. Mm -hmm.